A little later, Dan Garrett is sitting in Dr. Franz's laboratory in the rear of the little apothecary shop. But Danny, what makes you think Moroni shot Doyleson? I don't know. Just a hunch, I guess. But apparently only one shot was fired. According to Moroni's testimony at the trial, it came from the gun that Rogers held. That's Moroni's testimony. He had just as much of a motive as Rogers for wanting Doyleson out of the way. You mean his rival loan racket? Precisely. Doyleson was muscling in on his territory, as I told you. And Moroni was there that night to threaten Doyleson, I'm sure of it. But Rogers admitted on the stand that he pointed the gun at Doyleson, fired it, and Doyleson dropped with a bullet through the heart. But did the bullet that killed Doyleson come from the gun held by Rogers? Well, that I don't know. I'm going to call the ballistics department right now. Check with our expert, Pat Sullivan. Uh, go ahead, Danny. Uh, there's the phone right there. Thanks. And another thing. Rogers must have been an expert marksman to have shot Doyleson through the heart. The distance was about 20 feet, wasn't it? According to testimony. Hello? Hello, police department. This is patrolman Dan Garrett. Say, uh, give me ballistics. Hello, Sullivan? Garrett. Uh, do you remember the Rogers Doyleson case? Well, tell me something. Uh, was any examination made of the bullet extracted from Doyleson's body to establish the fact that it was shot from the murder gun? Hmm. Is that so? Yes, yes, I understand. Uh, say, could you get hold of the gun and the bullet and check them? Oh, uh, thanks a lot. Goodbye. Uh, what did he have to say? The bullet was never checked against the gun. Well, that's strange. Yes, it is. But Sullivan's going to check them now, isn't he? Yes, and the Blue Beetle's going to check on Mr. Maroney. Anything special you'd like to take with you? Uh, yes, Doc. What about the midget portable television set you were working on? Well, it isn't ready yet. Uh, well, how about the midget portable sound recording device? Oh, oh that's ready. I'll get it for you. Thanks, Doc. I'll need it tonight. All right. Here. Here you are, Danny. Now, uh, just slip it under your Blue Beetle armor. Okay. And where will the Blue Beetle fly tonight? To call upon Mr. Maroney first, and then upon the governor of the state. and you ain't letting anybody get through to the governor, are you? What? That's right. Keep everybody away from the governor. You know what'll happen to you if someone gets to him with a plea for a stay of execution? Well, see that you keep on the job. You're the governor's private secretary. Should be easy. Okay. But remember, if Rogers don't burn, it'll be just too bad for you. Goodbye. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Well, what do you want, masquerader? The murderer of Bats Doyleson. Oh, yeah? Well, you got the wrong address. You want the state penitentiary. You shot Doyleson, Maroney. Yeah? How are you going to prove it? With the bullet that killed Doyleson. And your gun there. Think so? Well, I'll just give you a taste of this gun like I gave Doyleson. <laughs> Empty your gun, Maroney, just as I thought you would. Why, you... Your bullets can't injure the Blue Beetle. Give me that gun. Come and take it, wise guy. That'll be easy. And I'll take your confession, just as I recorded it, on the device under my Blue Beetle armor. Oh. Back on your heels, murderer. Back on your oh. back. Hmm. That'll keep you quiet for a while. I'll just tie you up and take this gun. The cops are already on their way over here. There's a hot seat waiting for you, Maroney. Any other business, Jennings? No, oh, Your Excellency. It's nearly morning, sir. Why don't you get some rest? Uh, I think I will. You know, it's strange no one has approached me with a petition for clemency in this Rogers case. Well, Your Excellency, it uh, uh, was a case of deliberate murder. Yeah. Well, what's the sound? The Blue Beetle. Blue, Blue Beetle. Beetle. Yes, Your Excellency, and yes to you also, you gangster-controlled private secretary. I'll call the police, Your Excellency. This is an impudent... Stay the where pot. you are, Jennings. I want you and the governor to hear something. But I have no time for things like this. I've got to get some rest. Besides, this is highly irregular. Yes, but an innocent man's life is at stake. 
In 20 minutes, Stanley Rogers may be dead. Unless you sign a stay of execution, Your Excellency. But there's no reason, no new evidence. Here's new evidence, Your Excellency, right here in this little black box, this portable recording device. Listen. Hello? Yeah, this is Maroney. Say, listen, you ain't letting anybody get through to the governor, are you? What? That's right, keep everybody away from the governor. You know what'll happen to you if someone gets to him with a plea for a stay of execution. What's this? Well, I'll see that you keep on the job. You're the governor's private secretary. Oh, it Jennings. Easy. Well, I, I, keep I, quiet, I... Jennings, and listen. Okay. But remember, if Rogers don't burn, it'll be just too bad for you. Goodbye. The Blue Beetle. Yes, the Blue Beetle. Now, what do you want? Masquerader. Murderer of Bat Stoylson. Oh, yeah? Well, you've got the wrong address. You want the state penitentiary. You shot Doyleson, Maroney. Yeah? How are you going to prove it? With the bullet that killed Doyleson and your gun there. You think so? Well, I'll just give you a taste of this gun like I gave Doyleson. <laughs> shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to die. Steady, son, steady. Oh, all right, Father. I'm all right now. It was just the sight of that... Faster, pilot, faster. An innocent man's life is at stake. Paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Sit here, my son. Adjust the straps. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I. Faster, driver, faster! An innocent man's life is at stake! I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Ten seconds. They comfort me. The blue beetle. Blue beetle. Oh. Yes, the blue beetle. With a reprieve from the governor. What sort of a ghastly joke is this? This is no joke, warden. The blue beetle comes as a messenger of justice. Here, take this paper. You'll find it's a bona fide stay of execution. Signed by the governor of this state. But I don't understand. You're about to electrocute the wrong man, warden. Stanley Rogers is innocent. The real murderer is on his way here. Under police escort. I hope you'll have the guest chamber ready for him. Good night, gentlemen. The Blue Beetle's job is done. Just in the nick of time, the Blue Beetle saved an innocent man from death in the electric chair. Only 10 seconds between death and life for a foolish lad who liked to gamble. Later in Dr. Fran's little apothecary shop, Patrolman Dan Garrett is discussing certain features of the case with Dr. Fran. What did Pat Sullivan, the ballistic expert, find when he checked the murder bullet? That the murder bullet was fired from a gun I took from Maroney. But that still doesn't account for the fact that the gun Rogers thought he fired at Doyleson showed that a bullet had been fired from one chamber. Well, I hopped over to Doyleson's apartment before I came here. As a bullet embedded in the woodwork behind the piano, I phoned the inspector and he's sending someone over to investigate and make photographs. Then you Maroney think... fired that bullet into the wall out of the gun Rogers dropped after he ran from the apartment. Mm, I see. Maroney must have shot Doyleson with his gun from the door of the bedroom as Rogers was pointing his gun at Doyleson. That's correct. And in the emotional stress of the moment, Rogers believed he himself actually fired the shot. Yes, Maroney realized that and framed Rogers. Oh, shameful, shameful. 
And to think that the governor's secretary was involved in this. Well, he was in fear of his life. He didn't dare cross up Maroney. Well, Danny, you've done a fine night's work. Uh, you'd better get some rest. <laughs> yes, Doc. I can use it. Well, so long. I'll see you later. Dan Garrett is going to put the Blue Beetle to bed. <laughs> And so the Blue Beetle has done another noble deed, saved a life, and brought a murderer to justice. What will his next adventure be in his crusade against crime? That question will be answered in the next episode of The Blue Beetle. <laughs> copyrighted Fox feature appearing in Mystery Men Comics magazine on sale at your newsstand. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in. <laughs> <laughs>